Now, I don't expect you to watch this whole 12 minute long video. That's not the point. So here's where each of the valves show up in the video. I'm gonna show you five different valves so you can just go to the one you need. If you're not sure, here's a couple pictures so that you know which valve you have. Pause the video so you can take a look and find where it is. Here we go. Well, we're doing some maintenance here on this trailer. And while we've got this valve out, I wanted to show you how the insides of this particular valve work. I thought it might be helpful if you understood this a bit. So of course, at the back of a trailer, you don't normally see this, right? Normally you see this. This valve's bolted on there and you've got your valve handle that you turn. So the way this works is normally this plunger will be right up here on the end of that throw. And then when you close the valve, this pushes in towards the trailer and it pushes up against this pipe. That seal goes right up against that pipe. That's why it's perfectly clean. The exact opposite happens when you unload, right? It pulls that plunger away from there. And then when it pulls away, oil can fill up this cavity and then oil drops down that pipe and into your manifold right there. In this particular one, you can see how this started to chip away. So it was actually leaking oil even when the valve was closed. So that's why we're fixing this right now. Another thing that's important to notice is you see how this is actually what bolts here, but the valve is back here. And so some people think that the valve is actually right there on the edge. It's not. The, inside, the edge of the trailer is way back in there. It can be a little bit helpful if you encounter issues. This is not your valve, right? This is your manifold. This is just the barrel. And then the actual opening is like six to eight inches back inside. Another thing that would be good to point out while you can see this is valves have these throws that go through these and there's packing inside of here, which is what stops oil from coming through this pipe and coming out. Packing can wear out so it can start leaking and that's a part of how packing works, that's fine. So if you see oil start coming out of here, what you need to do is you turn these nuts a little bit. You do small increments, so like you turn this a half a turn, then you turn the other side a half a turn. You wanna make sure you turn them both the same amount so it's putting equal pressure on the packing. And what you do is you just go until it snugs up a bit. You don't tighten it down hard. That's not how packing works. I like to just turn them maybe half a turn, full turn, snugs up a bit, and then you just wait and see if the oil stops. Maybe spray some orange juice, clean it up, see if the oil continues to come out or not. And packing will last for years if you do it that way. So if you run into that issue, that's how you tighten up packing. You wanna do that when the trailer's unloading because then it's hot and this will move just fine and you won't have any problems. That's a way that you can service your valve out on the job. Really easy, nothing to it. That's how this particular valve functions. Next, we have the flush valve. More specifically, we're gonna look at the Betts four inch flush valve. They come in a few different sizes. Four inch is pretty darn common. This is a new one, of course. And then we've got the ones installed on our trailers. They look more like this. You'll obviously see that you can't see where it bolts to the trailer because what we like to do is put them back inside the skin and you insulate around it and then put flashing to cover and protect that. But for an example of what it looks like on the pup here, We've taken the flashing off. You can see how it bolts right up to the sump right there. A couple notes on this one. It's a really simple valve. In fact, there's no gaskets on here, which is really nice, meaning you don't have to be too careful when it comes to heating up the valve itself. Obviously, if you're trying to heat up and you've got flashing and other things, you have to really be careful because you can melt the aluminum, you can melt your wiring and all those other things. But this valve itself, because the valve, um, plunger here comes right against the valve you can heat it right here and it transfers heat really well it does have packing in here and so you can look in here and see that rod that's got the packing so you don't have oil coming through where your valve throw goes in so try not to get this as hot focus more on this area so if you're heating this valve you, you really kind of focus on trying to hit here here seeing if you can get that heat to go back through there the one thing we do run into because this valve body closes in the valve instead of pulling away from the trailer, sometimes it can get stuff in it if there's anything in the trailer. So let me close this real quick and show you. All right, you see how that seats in there. So if you have something comes loose, a baffle breaks, or there's just something in there, it does tend to get caught in here. We don't see that on our other trailers because they, they pull away and 
I don't know, it just doesn't happen. But ironically, even right now, I have a trailer in the shop because it's got something stuck in there. So that can happen. The easiest way to know how to, uh, if, if you've got that issue, is keep an eye on your threads. Obviously, it's not plugged right now. So I could count these and I could look at, say, right where the threads start. And I could, you know, one, two, three, four, five. If something gets stuck in there, obviously it's going to be not all the way out. And if you're sitting here saying one, two, three, four, well, you might have something that's plugged in there. That's the flush valve. The next valve we want to show here is an air operated internal air cylinder. And so a big difference here is the other valves are all steel and they can take a lot of heat. This one has gaskets in it and really can't. In fact, here, we'll open it real quick. Go ahead and shoot some air in there. That's good. So you can see that red gasket in there. That's rated for 400 degrees. And so if you ever had a clog or you felt like you needed to heat this up, you stand a good chance of damaging this O-ring. And plus inside of here, the components in there have seals that are also only rated to 400 degrees. So heating this up, really not a good idea. If you have steam, steam would be a great way to heat it up. So this particular valve, you can see how right here it bolts on, would go into a trailer. Got this out right now. You can see that in this sump just warmed up some asphalt. And so you can see how this sump is even below the trailer. You see that line right there? And so it sticks down from the trailer a little bit. Gives you an idea of how it's set up when it's actually installed in there. So if you have issues with this one, you just gotta be really delicate. There's just no other way around it. This does have a manual way to open it. And if we run into that, we'll show you how to deal with that. But this is how this particular valve works once again um, you know heating down here you're still as you can see far away but the oil does come down to right here so if you're to heat up with some steam or very carefully with the torch you could get some heat to penetrate into the oil just right there because the oil comes down and around this cylinder and then when this goes up the oil comes around there so that's how that works I do want to show you how to manually open this valve we may as well while we're here so say something goes wrong um, you don't know why, but it's not opening. It, it could be that the seals have gone bad. That's why we're replacing this one right now. This is the good one, that the old one's over there. Um, the seals have gone bad. It won't open, the air doesn't work. So to do that, you take this long screw out, and then you can see this Allen head that's right behind it. Next, you take that out. Then you take this screw and put it in where the Allen head was. That screws in. And it comes in at an angle right here and actually pushes this up. And so it's a manual way of opening it. And then when you go to close it, you just take it out. The only thing, just be aware, a little bit of product can catch in there. So when you unscrew it and completely remove this from that hole, be aware that a little bit of oil can come out. It's not like it just sprays out. It's just there's a little pocket that'll get in there. So be aware of that. And then when you're done with that, put the Allen key back in put this back here and that's actually how it stays on the valve for transport so that you always have it with you if you ever need it. So now I'm looking at an Etnire trailer with the proprietary Etnire valve. It's a six inch valve that reduces down to a four inch manifold. It's in our Etnire trailer. As you can tell, because the flashing, you really can't see much about the valve itself, but I got a brand new one here. We're about to install in a different trailer. And one of the things we love the most, these things turn so well. I mean, I can just spin that and it just goes, and it'll it'll do that when it's uh, got asphalt in there too. Part of the reason is because on this valve throw, they use a scraper and an O-ring. In fact, I can kind of show you if I take this out, and uh, they don't use packing, so you can actually kind of see that scraper there, but that's not super important. I guess the thing we want to show you though is you can see how far away from the back of the trailer this assembly is. This is what welds into the bottom of the trailer. And so if you have an issue heating up here, you're really not gonna do anything. You're just heating insulation. As well, if you tried to heat up the manifold, well, once that bolts on down here, you're still kind of a ways away from where the oil actually is. The best thing is if you were to have an issue, you need to remove this flashing and then try and put heat here. 
We have not had issues with these valves though and needed to do that. So I hope that's not an issue that you're running into, but at least you see an overview of how the valve works. As I mentioned, it doesn't have packing, but it does still have an O-ring. And so that could get burned. So that's why you gotta be a little careful. There's not much else to it though. The scraper and everything, it's just got that little bit of rubber. So try to keep your heat away from here if you do have to heat it. That's the Etnire valve. Just a quick look here at your pretty standard gate valve. I show this just because maybe you haven't had the chance to look at the internal guts of these things. And just so you know, once again, if you had to heat it up, what you're dealing with. These are pretty straightforward. You know, obviously I'm looking at one that's meant for asphalt. And so they're, I think this is stainless steel and there's no gaskets or anything down here. It's just the blade that comes down. Up here, you do still have packing. So, and of course you don't want to heat here very much. It doesn't do you any good. You can put a little heat there just to warm it up so that your throw will slide out a little easier, but don't sit here and just torch this thing to death. Just as you heat this up, it'll probably move that heat up there to where it moves okay. Not a lot to these things. They're really quite easy to operate, almost indestructible for the most part. You can have leaks here that you gotta take this nut out and then you can replace the packing on and you can adjust the packing by tightening that down a little bit. So there's a gate valve.